What's up y'all, I'm out here at the range still as you can see back behind me, been out here doing some testing under these fantastic blue skies, perfect temperature out here to do some testing, and this one right here should be very interesting. So as usual, we got the jelly contraption set up, ready to roll with the chrono and two blocks of gel. Now I've done a couple of tests in this far block already, so it's pretty full, but nothing at all went into this first one up here, so we'll get a really good picture of what happens. Now as you can see, like I always like to mention, I am using a heavy clothing barrier here with a layer of denim, a layer of fleece and two layers of cotton t-shirt material. Now what we're testing here today, like I said, should be very interesting. As y'all can see, I've got my Ruger GP100 here with the four inch barrel and we got three different types of ammo. We got some good old 357 mag here, 125 grain, jacketed hollow point Winchester Super X. Nothing special about it there, just a basic 125 grain hollow point. And then next we got some 38 special plus P here, same weight, 125 grain. Now these just happen to be loaded with the silver tip projectile, but they're both Winchester Super X. Um, I just picked these up because I thought they would be really, really similar to test with. And then lastly, basically the whole purpose of this video, we got some 38 Super Plus P here, 115 grain jacketed hollow point, just some regular basic Federal American Eagle. Now I'm sure the first thing that's coming to a lot of y'all's mind is, can you run 38 Super Plus P in a 357 Magnum revolver? Now I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about why and how. Uh, Paul Harrell did an excellent video about this. If y'all hadn't seen that, I'll try to find a link and leave that in the description description but basically what it boils down to is this is a semi-rimmed case these 38 supers are semi-rimmed very similar to a third auto running out of my 327 that i've showed in the past so that's how it can actually chamber in the cylinder and the ejector will actually get up under the rim there's just enough rim to eject it and, and run it in the cylinder just fine now the the two main questions would be can you run 38 super plus p in a 357 revolver the answer to that is sometimes the next question would probably be should you run 38 Super Plus P and a 357 revolver? The answer to that one is that's entirely up to you to figure out for yourself. My main purpose for this one today is to see what kind of performance difference we get between these three rounds out of this four inch Ruger GP100. So again, this should be very interesting to see what these things do in the jail side by side. Let me get this stuff set up and let's check them out. All right, let's get some speeds on these things, y'all. I'm gonna do a five round average from each one of them. We'll do the uh, 38 Super, then the 38 Special, and then the 357. Them. So let's see what these 38 supers are running out of this GP100. 1060. 1110. 1038. 1083. And 984 so very inconsistent it could be because we're running these out of a revolver like that but they're all over the place and i can even hear the difference but uh, as far as ejecting as you can see they eject just fine no problem at all nothing getting stuck at all so um now one thing you'll see if you do check out paul's video he shows you that sometimes the same ammo won't fit in different ones different brands of revolvers like this federal american eagle so far it fits this gp100 fine and it fit my tar 605 just fine but anyway let's check this average out and see what we got all right so our five round average from that 38 super is a thousand fifty five feet per second i believe the box was saying 11 30 so we definitely didn't see that um like i say part of that could be the pressure we're losing from this revolver i'd say a good bit of that is the extreme spread on this was like 120 something so definitely not consistent from this revolver but let me get this reset and let's check out the 38 special all right let's see what these 38 special plus p's can do these are saying 945 on the box so be curious to see if we get there with these all right we got 893 959 913 925 and 944 so not quite there on all of them we almost made it on that last one though let's check that average all right our five round average from the 38 special plus p is 926 feet per second and those sounded a lot more consistent and the extreme spread was basically cut in half here like i said well, you can't really blame the ammo for that on that 38 super um like i mentioned we're losing some pressure i don't know if i mentioned before because i didn't want to get into a lot of detail but even the projectiles a little smaller you're talking about a 356 projectile in that 38 
38 Super, where it's a 357 and the 38 and the 357. But anyway, let me reset it and let's check out the 357 mags. All right, y'all, let's feed this thing what it was meant to have with these 357 mags. See what we get this time. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 14, 14, I believe. Uh, 1433. Yeah, that's a huge difference. 1456. 1445. And 1439. So that definitely ramped it on up right there. Let's check that average. All right, now we're talking, y'all. The five round average on that 357 mag is 1437 feet per second. If you remember the 38 Super, it was 1055. And then if you remember that 38 Special Plus P, it was 926. So should be real interesting to see what all three of these do in the jail. I know this 357 mag is going to do well. I don't have any doubt. The 38 Super in special, I'm a little bit iffy on just based on these speeds running through this heavy clothing and just depending on how these projectiles are built it's all gonna come down to that should be real interesting let me get this reset and y'all know what time it is all right y'all it's you can but should you jelly time i'm gonna put one of each round into the gel down there starting with this 38 super first really curious to see what this one does i'm for some reason i'm just not expecting the best out of this thing but maybe i'll be wrong All right, that should have been a good one right there. Let me go down there and see where we ended up. All right, that's looking about like what I expected down there. Definitely nothing to get excited over. So let's see what this 38 Special Plus P with the silver tip does. I'm gonna try to put this thing up above. It's gonna be tricky though. I think I'm, uh, I think I'm hitting a little lower than my point of aim. All right, that one actually should have been perfect, I believe. Let me go down there and check that out. All right, totally different story with that one. That one got us back on track for sure. So let's try out this last 357 Magnum here. I'm gonna try to go up underneath those two, but this might get ugly. Went a little lower than I wanted to on those other ones. Actually, I think that ended up absolutely perfect. As long as it stayed out the bottom, let's go see what we got. All right, let's check out what we got here. I got you on the back side here. Since they were closer to this side, you can get a really nice view of what's happening. And I had to pull you back some because as you can see way down here, that's the 38 Super. It went on into that second block. So got you pulled back so we can see everything. So let's start by looking at this 38 Super. What I can tell, it came in here. It actually expanded almost immediately, although it doesn't have much at all as far as expansion. It looks like it did expand immediately. Carries on through the block here. Decent little wound channel nothing crazy big or anything like that but decent little channel into the second block here and then stopped right there it's not quite backwards and it doesn't have a lot of expansion the expansion on this thing really reminds me of an uh, xtp that doesn't have enough speed behind it it's got some expansion but just minimal now the next one is the one on the very top up here that's the 38 special plus p silver tip this one did a fantastic job this one really surprised me i didn't expect very much out of it just because of the speed and in this cloth but it really really did nicely came in here you can tell expanded immediately nice disruption of wound channel there looks about the same as this 38 super uh, just from different angles carries on through this block here and stops right here looks like it's got some expansion not a whole lot it's hard to tell until i pull it uh, i would say probably 14 15 inches on the penetration and last but definitely not least here on the bottom is the 357 magnum that thing obviously came in here went to pieces dumped a bunch of lead went through the cloth no problem at all not as much uh, penetration obviously as the other two but it definitely dumped a lot of energy and got some good expansion like i say fragment it dumped a bunch of the lead from where it did expand now as far as the penetration this 38 super is all the way out here at 22 and a half inches the 38 special plus p is at 14 and a quarter and then our 357 is at 12 and a half so decent expansion 
racing on these 38s and the 357, you got a bunch off of that 38 Super, but in my opinion, that's a little too much. Here's a little bit closer look of all three of them. Again, on the top 38 Special, middle 38 Super, bottom 357 Magnum. So you can see the differences there. There's that 357 Magnum. Like I say, it definitely lost some material. Hard to say yet on the 38 Special. And then we keep following that Super. And there's that Super projectile. Like I said, it's got some expansion, but not much at all. All right, let's check out these projectiles, y'all. So big differences in between these things, obviously. This right here, this is what's left of the 357 Magnum there. As you can see, just massive expansion. I mean, it folded it all the way back. I believe it probably lost about half of its weight in lead in the gel because it's just a little old disc that's all that's left here. And then this one here is your 38 Special Plus P Silver Tip. Great performance out of this one, in my opinion. Really, really nice expansion out of this thing. Very, very even expansion. It didn't have any cloth look like the clogged up in it so really really nice right there and then this one here obviously is your 38 super like i said not much expansion on this now it looks like it did have a problem pushing the cloth out as you can see it's still got some cloth clogged in it part of that i'm sure is the pressure loss like i said this projectile is not as big as these these are 0.357s this is a 0.356 so this is in between a 9 and a 357 so i'm sure you got more pressure loss with this but that being said i honestly don't think this is just pure speculation and guessing i don't know that we would see much more out of this even at you know another 50 feet per second or so it's hard to say what this one entered the gel at but those y'all who actually have something chambered in 38 super have you ever tested them and what have you seen well let's get some weights on these things and see what we're looking at so we'll start with this super it started at 115 and you got 114 point six so maybe a little loss could be tolerances there uh the 38 special at 125 that one's at 124.6, so same deal there. Could have been a little bit of loss. And then this 357 here also started at 125, and we're at 62.2. So I figured it lost at least half of its material. Now, as far as the expansion on them, we'll start with this 38 Super here. You got 432 and 429. So like I said, not much expansion on that one there. Next up with the 38 Special, you got 527 and 533, so nice expansion on that one. And then what's left of this 357 mag here, you got 450 and 459 so not the biggest number there but that thing had some big time expansion as you can see it just lost most of what it expanded so there you have it y'all 38 super from a 357 mag revolver that was basically the main purpose of this test nothing impressive out of this 38 super like i said it's probably partly due just from what the ammo is part of it some pressure loss and definitely not the optimal tool to be testing this out of but pretty interesting nonetheless now these other two rounds uh, a big plus of this test was we found two more rounds that i think did a fantastic job all right y'all that's a wrap for what i think was another very interesting test 38 super from a 357 mag revolver as you saw from the performance out of these three rounds you definitely can run that super out of this 357 mag revolver this particular one anyway but in no way is it worth it in my opinion just got over penetration out of it the 357 obviously performed much better much more energy the 38 special i'd have to do the math i think it's going to end up with a little bit less energy maybe right about the same but definitely still better performance in my my opinion than the 38 super out of this revolver now like i said i'll definitely be one to admit this was not the best representation of 38 super testing it from a revolver like this i'm sure you would get some better performance out of something that was chambered to receive that round now you may not this it may be a case that these federal american eagles just ain't that great and this might be the performance you see anyway but y'all let me know what y'all think about it any y'all out there that do have something chambered in 38 super let me know if you've ever done any kind of ballistic testing what kind of velocities you're seeing how far i'm my off from those out of this revolver let me know down in the comments what your experience is but if you did enjoy this video hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel and make sure you got your notifications turned on so you don't miss stuff when i upload it y'all check out those affiliate links in the video description if you shop through amazon hit that one up first you'll go right through amazon like normal from there and anything you buy after that i get a kickback from them towards the channel same deal goes for the axle links if you're looking for some really nice ear pro hit up that link down there check out those gs extreme earbuds and you can save a lot of money going through that link instead of straight to their site like i always tell you i appreciate all my range gang members and every single one of y'all out there that supports the channel i've done some pretty interesting tests today i'm gonna try to get one more knocked out before i head out of here so be on the lookout for a lot of good stuff headed your way and in the meantime stay safe stay prepared and i'll see you soon